Welcome to this overview about PXF Area Light. So here I have a little scene that I've built myself in Nuke, uh, mostly with geometry that I've imported with uh, Read Geo. So let's turn on the headlight. That's easier to look at things this way. So now I have geometry imported with Read Geo. I have a card and a couple spheres. So all of this is built into a scene and I've made sure that every item has a shader or some shaders on it. So here I have, for example, the statue. It has a diffuse and a specular shader on it. The chrome ball here has a diffuse and a reflection shader. Uh, the gray ball, a diffuse and specular and so on. So every item is shaded properly and I'm putting everything into a C node and that C node is feeding a scanline render. Let's have a look, switch to 2D and nothing shows up. That's because everything is shaded, but there's no lights in my scene. So I can create uh, new lights, of course. So if I go into the menu here, pick a point light, for example, and add it into my scene, I can move the light around and this doesn't look very photo realistic but we can help it a little bit by turning on the fall off making the light a lot brighter because of the fall off we need to crank it up so let's make it way bright here we go and we could uh, turn on the shadows and nothing happens so if i turn on the shadows no shadows show up that's because point lights are not uh, supported with shadows in Scanline Render. However, we do have an alternate render engine in Nuke called Ray Render. So Ray Render is the built-in ray tracer for Nuke, and this guy supports shadows for point lights. So now we have shadows. We also have values that go above one here. The bright stuff goes above one, so to make it nicer to look at, I've added a soft clip at the end of my chain here and it's set to logarithmic compress and I've set the soft clip min to zero. So that's going to uh, add a little bit of roundness to our highlights here, makes it prettier to look at. So this is somewhat realistic. We have shadows and we have a uh, fall off, but we're still stuck with a single point light. So that point light is a literal point light and either the light is blocked or it's not blocked so there's zero feathering ze zero soft shadows everything is very hard lit and we wish we could have an area light for example and that's what we have now in pixel fudger version 3. so let's bring out an area light here we go and let's get rid of our point light and put the area light in our scene. By default, the area light is tiny and it's at the 000 in my scene, so I need to make it bigger. To move, scale, rotate my area light, I need an axis. So I'm gonna create an axis and put it in the axis input. Scale my area light up. Here we go. We're gonna rotate it. So, and move it to the side here. Here we go. So this makes already more sense. This looks way more uh, realistic. So this is like a big Aquino flow. So we've got soft shadows here and we've got proper fall off and everything looks uh, a little bit more photographic. Let's uh, give it a bit of an angle, make it more, whoops, the other way around, plus 45. Here we go. So this uh, looks already a little bit more realistic. So how is this possible? How can we create an area light in Nuke where area lights aren't supported? There are no area lights built into Nuke. So how did we achieve this? Well, we we're cheating. <laughs> we're creating a bunch of point lights in a grid pattern, uh, six by six lights here and we're creating a bunch of point lights that are all blending together and creating the illusion of an area light. We can decide how dense or not we want this grid to be. The more lights we have, the more quality shadows we have, but the longer it is to render. So let's see the difference here. So if I change my amount of lights 
from a 5x5 array. So it says 5x5. We're using the vertices of a car to drive the amount of lights. So really 5x5 means 36 lights. It's a bit funny math, but the real number is the one in gray here. So the, there are actually 36 lights in our array here. If I change that to, let's say, 3x3, three three, then we have less lights in our array. Our render is much faster, but our shadows start to suffer. Now we can see the 16 individual shadows all overlapping together and we might might need more detail here so if, if we increase the amount of lights our shadow will become nicer so if i set it back to five by five then the shadows are a bit nicer and if i go to 20 by 20 this is gonna take a while to update <laughs> on my modest computer now we have 441 lights in our rig and it's gonna take a lot longer to render my frame but now my shadows are much softer because essentially we have 441 shadows all blending together so let's bring that number down a lot <laughs> so we can work more comfortably here we go so now we're back to five by five all right so first thing we have to decide is how many lights do we want in the rig more lights is slower, but the shadows are nicer, so we gotta find a sweet spot. Now that we've uh, decided how many lights we want, we can decide whether th those lights are directional or not. So by default, directional is turned on, so the lights are shining only towards the side of those little cones here. So in our case, towards the left side, and no light is going to the right side. If we turn off directional, then the point lights in the rig will illuminate all around them and light will be going both ways uh, from the front and the back if we find that the directional fall off here is too sharp we can lower the spread so if i lower the spread to 0.1 then we'll see our fall off is much more soft if we want it harder we can go back to one if we really want it super hard we can lower the penumbra angle all the way down to 10 degrees and now our edge is really really sharp i want something more natural so i'm gonna set the penumbra angle to 180 and the spread to 0.1 and this looks more natural one really cool thing about pxf area light is not we're not limited to a white square so right now our light texture is essentially a white square but we can use anything we want so if we have an image an HDR image of a light fixture. For example, here I have an umbrella. This was shot with uh, bracketed exposure, so I really have the uh, true highlight values here. And if I use that as my light map, then we can see that now we're lighting the scene with our uh, umbrella. Notice that our shadows are suffering here because area light is smart and it won't create lights where the value of the map here is zero so if we look at our area light in 3d we can see that we only have lights wherever the rgb value is above zero so now we even though we're at five by five we only have 15 lights uh, in our rig and that makes our shadows suffer so we could increase this to let's say 15 by 15 and now we have more lights in our rig and our shadows should be back to looking good let's switch back to 2d here here you go so now our shadows are more natural so now we're using uh, the values of our image to drive whether or not lights should be created and we're sampling the intensity also of each uh, light according to the map so the lights that are in the middle will emit more light will be brighter than the lights in, uh, around the edge here of the umbrella. Not only are we sampling the intensity, we're also sampling the color. So let's uh, bring our values back down to smaller amount of lights. So if we use a map that's colorful, not only are we gonna use the value for the intensity, but also the color. So now our light source is a mix of blue and, and skin tone and so on. So to make this very clear, I have got a map with very obvious colors here like so and now our lights are actually 
uh, colored according to the values of those pixels. So if I look at this, the lights in the red area will emit red light and the lights in the green area will emit green and these guys are emitting blue and so on. So now I have a multicolored light rig. And of course you can use uh, funky shapes. So if I want to simulate a ring light, I could do that. And now I have lights only around the uh, white areas of the ring and not in the middle. Let's bring our values down to something a little bit more manageable. Here we go. So that looks pretty good. We can, of course, turn on and off the shadows. So we can, if we uncheck shadows, then we won't emit shadows. And we have the uh, shadow mode. So we can de decide whether or not we're using the texture or the uh, geometry to cast shadows. So let's set up a light here that's a little bit easier to see for shadows. So let's make it smaller. So notice here that even though my card has bits that are transparent, there is a texture on it and we should be able to see through it. We, When we look at the shadow, the entire geometry is casting a shadow on the statue here because our light mode is set or shadow mode is set to solid. So we're using the geometry to determine whether or not the light rays are blocked. Uh, we could use full alpha and then the texture will have an impact on whether or not the light goes through. So now uh, the texture is used to block the rays instead of the, the geometry. There's also clipped alpha. This is ignored by ray render. Uh, ray render doesn't make any difference between clipped and full alpha. Uh, scanline render with some types of lights might benefit from using clipped alpha. Honestly, if you want shadows, ray render is the way to go. Scanline render has too many limitations for shadows. We can change the intensity of the light in the color tab. So of course we can make our lights dimmer or brighter. So that's pretty straightforward. Here we go. We can change the color of the light. So if we want some colorful lighting, we can set that up. We can change the fall off type. So cubic is the most uh, photorealistic. If you have other uh, needs, you can choose other types of fall off. So no fall off will do what it says. So the light will just keep being the same intensity no matter how close or far you are to the light source. So because it's not falling off now, it's way too bright. So we gotta bring down the intensity along with uh, turning off the fall off. So now the distance to the light has zero effect. So if an object is close or near to the light source, it won't change anything. You can uh, use linear fall off. So if something is twice as far, it will be uh, half the intensity. So this is better, but it's still not uh, photographically accurate. We can use quadratic. So quadratic is slightly more photoreal, but the real thing is cubic. So as the fall off becomes more aggressive, we have to increase the intensity to compensate for the light loss as we go uh, farther away. So in our case here, probably 75 will look reasonable. Here we go. So this is depending on your scene scale, you might ha need to have a very high number here. If you have a scene that's very big and your light is really far away from your subject, you might need to have intensity in the thousands or the tens of thousands. Gamma is when you have a texture. So if we're using a texture map, you can apply a gamma before it gets sampled by the lights. Uh, usually you want this to stay at one, but you can experiment with other values. So if I make a wacky gamma here, you can see that the fall off will behave uh, differently. Usually you want that at one. The emissive object is necessary if you want to see your light source in reflections. So now you can see the reflection of the rim, ring light in the chrome ball. If you don't want to see your emissive object, you can turn it off under emissive object and disable the emissive object. So the light source will be invisible to camera and to your uh, reflective object here. You can also adjust the 
color and intensity of the emissive object independently from the light. So if we make the light colorful, like so, our emissive object becomes pink, but we can tweak it if we feel that the color is not uh, good. So you can adjust the color of the emissive object independently and the intensity of the emissive object independently. So this will have no impact on your lighting. The emissive object is not lighting the scene. It's just whether or not you want to see the light source uh, on the camera and on reflective uh, surfaces. So there you go. That's an overview of uh, PXF uh, Area Light. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.